I'm going to make this invasive bodily procedure for me, right? Do I want to get filler in my nose because it makes it straight and makes me feel good? Or do I think this person's going to like me if I had a straight nose? Welcome to today's episode of the Create Your Fate podcast. I am your host, life coach, Meg Ellis, and my bestie, Alana, is back (laughs) for part three. We are wrapping it up of body image. There's just so much to talk about. And it was Elena, the first two episodes, but she has now asked to uh, use her (laughs) code name (laughs) for for public uh, to protect her identity. So Alana, welcome back. (laughs) It's great to be here. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh, this is too funny. Well, I'm still in Austin. Change my voice. (laughs) It's right. <laughs> Nobody's gonna know it's you, especially not on YouTube on the video. How um, are they gonna know? No one's gonna know. <laughs> They're really gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. So we are getting to this really. There's just so many things that we could talk about. You know, um, let's go into. Uh, let's start first with BMI. Things that we're gonna be covering on this episode: BMI, food pyramid, how ideal body type has changed. And then we'll wrap up with fillers and Botox, kind of hit that back up. But then um, just some, you know, things that you can do for positive body image and how to feel good about yourself, you know? Um, So let's just go into BMI, which is um, what makes us all feel really shitty about ourselves, you know? So I don't know if you know this, but the BMI, um, the body mass index chart that, you know, you step on the scale of the doctors and they measure you and they basically tell you where you land on the BMI scale or the chart. And there's like red, yellow, green, and you should really be, it measures you if you're the right weight or if you are, they measure you for obesity. But really this BMI chart was not even developed by a doctor or any type of health practitioner. It was a mathematician in the 1830s who was a man. He was a man. So this episode might be called F the patriarchy. I don't know, (laughs) but we haven't gotten that far yet. But it was developed by a man. If ever there was an episode to say F the patriarchy, it's about the man who created BMI. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> it is literally. We should call it that. I'll I'll send the notes over. Um, but really, uh, is developed by a mathematician, a man. He did not even account for all body types. He measured seventy four hundred men from twelve sample groups. That's it. That's it. And you said what in the mid in the 1800s? Yeah, in the 1800s, looking to see, you know, what European men. Your, yeah, Western European men. So not even like any other ethnicity, right? Uh, well, I think there are a couple on there. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Italian railway workers. I'm just reading this now. Uh, men f- from East and West Finland, Japanese farmers and like fishermen. South African, uh, could not be suggested to be a representative sample. So, um, and this is, this is on ABC news, just letting y'all know, but it wasn't even a chart designed to measure obesity. It was literally to, to find the average size of men in the 1800s. So do not let that, uh, get you down because, you know what I want to say to that guy? Stay in your lane. And also, more importantly, who used this information to now relate to everybody's bodies and say, let's move this to measure obesity? Like, who's that guy? That's what I want to know. Right. It's funny because when I Google BMI, it's like one of the first things that comes up is, why is it inaccurate? But the reason I have beef with it is because they give you a healthy, underweight, normal, whatever index based on your weight and your height. But like that doesn't take into account muscle mass. And some people have a lot of muscle. So Mm -hmm. how I just don't understand 
who supported this person and thinking, oh, the BMI is a great idea. Like maybe it's like a rough estimate, but Mm -hmm. I am always like always going to have a lot of muscle. Like I just do my legs muscle. Right. There's a lot of, you know, what's funny is when I first moved to Texas, I know even before this is like 2013 ish. Even in Pittsburgh, I um, started doing bar classes with a friend, and I had never done that before. I was always just a cardio person. I was a runner. I did sports. So I had really muscular legs, and then I was going to – and I'm also highly inflexible. I'm working on it, but just naturally, I have very tight hamstrings. It's like a family thing. My sister has it, my dad. But anyway, so I go to this bar class, and I did it for a little while, and – Everybody else is, you know, really like tall, maybe not, but like really skinny, right? With no muscle. And I'm I'm not saying people who do ball bar bar have no muscle, but when I started it, I was very out of place. And everyone's bending their legs like woo, like doing these things. You're like lifting your leg up in like the air, doing all these crazy things. I was like, what is this? It's not running. I don't know what to do. And I could, I could, like everyone else has like a 90 degree angle with their legs. And I'm over here like, oh my God, <laughs> like, first of all, I don't have the <laughs> flexibility to do it. But also your leg weighs 20 pounds, girlfriend next to right. me. My leg weighs 70 pounds. You know? <laughs> right, so, right. Like, anyway, that's just my beef with bar, apparently. I just had to vent that out. Yeah, Thank dude. you for being a safe space. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know you had that experience. I know. I've never talked about it. Well, <laughs> feel better. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, I love bar now. It's people. it's really great. <laughs> but back then, I was very intimidated. I don't think I've done bar since before the um, pandemic. Yeah, it's a great workout. It is. Um, it is. But it was not for me personally but yeah it's uh it does not account for muscle it doesn't account for so many things and it sure as hell does not make you feel good about yourself you know right so that's my beef with that had no idea that it was well should have known the history Mm -hmm. but didn't yeah speaking of things that don't make you feel good about yourself i have the original food pyramid up from the 1970s and hmm. I'll pull up I'll pull up the current one. <laughs> so at the very bottom, which is the biggest part of the pyramid where it shows you should have the most food, it is bread, cereal, rice, and pasta. Six to eleven servings. And I is this per day? I'm pretty sure this is per day. Know. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's gotta be. I mean, I'm looking at this like per week, but I'm pretty sure it's per day. (laughs) So six to 10 servings per day of bread, cereal, rice, and pasta, right? All these things that are super inflammatory foods. Personally, I try and be gluten-free. I'm gluten conscious, which is what I say. Um, I'm aware that I'm destroying my body every time I eat gluten. (laughs) So I I try not to eat it when I can can cut it out. Um, I'm not, you know, 100% probably 80, 20, but you know, I, I don't know about you, but we grew up in my household. We had sugar cereal for breakfast. Oh no, that was a treat for us. Oh my God. We had it every single day, every single day. Mm-hmm. We had sugar cereal, a treat. like frosted flakes, frosted flakes, sponsor this. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what, I don't know what the other ones are. Fruity pebbles, all that stuff. We had that every single day. And then we would have a sandwich. For lunch with the little side of Ritz crackers or something like that, a fruit, and then a dessert, which is like a ho-ho or something. And then we'd have an afternoon Mm -hmm. snack, which was some type of potato chip. And then we'd have some type of pasta or potatoes for dinner. And then we'd have ice cream (laughs) and like in a cone, you know, for dessert. Like that's what I ate every single day until I was probably 16. I can't remember that spam cat. <laughs> Wait, what? 
the spam loaf or whatever. Oh, <laughs> it's called a ham loaf, and it was so <laughs> disgusting. My my mom has many strengths, and cooking is just not her greatest. We'll say that. <laughs> and that's very nice of you. I know. I phrased that well, as nicely as I could. What? We both grew up in pretty big families, four kids. Yeah. Um, Gee, it was it was like it was cooking for the masses, you know. It's like, oh, it's wedding yeah. food. You know, it's not gonna be really yeah. good. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm glad that I never was presented with a ham loaf. Yeah, um, if you can imagine like, yeah. meatloaf but with spam. Yeah. Like so. who who one day my dad who have who I mean we just ate not good food for a long time. And one day he literally just like slams his hands down on the table and he's like, Tracy, no more ham loaf. <laughs> we were like, oh my God, thank God. <laughs> Yay. Because it was, oh my God. Ugh. Oh my God. I know. It's hilarious. But anyway. Yeah. We used to, we had similar, I mean, you know, we didn't have, we didn't have sugary cereals, but we did have toaster strudels. Mm, pop tarts we had pop tarts mm. same thing it's like i don't know why toaster strudels were okay but like <laughs> we rarely got pop tarts like i don't you can have the thing with the, the frosting pack and you can yeah we're gonna have to ask your mom like, where where the line was it's a little gray <laughs> yeah <laughs> we need to ask her about it so um, on this original food chart it has basically six to eleven servings of uh, bread cereal rice pasta and then you have three to five vegetables so that's cut in half yeah that's literally nutty where, the, where did the potato chips fall in oh, do they count as fast because like for the treats it looks like mostly ice cream like sweets right i mean i think it would be both like fats and because it's the fat comes from the oil and stuff and the way it's prepared. Yeah. I don't know. Now I'm questioning all my knowledge. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Where does the potato chip land? I mean, it's definitely I mean, a starch. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Well, like yeah. there's a croissant and a pretzel on this healthy food pyramid. But anyway, <laughs> all that to say. Hey, if someone tried to tell me that croissants are healthy, I'm not going to fight them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I but know. I don't know. It, it this is just so entirely it's crazy. It's crazy. And then you you grow up and you're addicted to sugar and then you get to a teenager and they're like, "Hey, can you look like Paris Hilton?" You're like, "What?" <laughs> but I like sugar. Yeah. With this skin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, just other yeah. like other things that we just assumed were I mean there's a lot of assumptions right we talked about assumptions in the last episode so if you if you missed the first two episodes definitely check them out there's good stuff in there um you know we were talking about plastic surgery and even just like the assumption of why somebody did what they did or it's just assumptions about other people's body types plastic surgery aside it's like leave people alone stay in your lane but there was a lot of assumptions yeah. you know even growing up with these BMI and the food chart of oh these are these are what's good you know and it's mm -hmm. like, hmm, when did we decide to question it? Right. And why didn't we decide to question it sooner? But, you know, well, it's interesting, the too, internet. is that true, the internet. It was the it 90s. Other things. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's leading back to the internet. <laughs> I mean, listen, if I have to fight my three siblings for my 10 minutes of dial-up internet and AOL. block the phone line and wait there for two minutes while it loads with an annoying noise when i finally get to the world wide web i'm not looking up the food chart <laughs> yeah this is true this is a good a very good point you know i was looking up pictures of guys that i thought were hot and then printing them out and taping them to my notebook that's a whole other story yeah um, but... what did you even google <laughs> Cute boys. <laughs> no, you went to Abercrombie, you got the bags. I asked Jeeves a few more questions than Google. <laughs> asked sure. Jeeves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder what else he has he's but, doing these days. I don't know. 
But when you think about also like crash dieting, even though we weren't doing it so much in like the 80s and 90s, people were turning to like a magic shake. Like it was probably a sugary shake drink, but they're just cutting their calories so much or like a bar. Right. Um, Or those pills, Anna and Nicole and the... Oh, yeah. Um, I can't remember what it was. I mean, even like Khloe Kardashian did the same thing a couple years ago, right? It's probably 10 years ago. Yeah. But I can't remember what the, the – Meanwhile, pill- they're like showing them eating salads and all of their shows, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, well, even it's, nowadays, it's, there's this, you know, magic, magic prescription drugs out there that, you know, aren't the best for you long term. But if you, right. you know, so just like do your research on that, you know? Yeah. People, I mean, people, I don't, I think the thing that will never change is that people are always looking for the easy cure, whether it's a pill, whether it's plastic surgery, you know, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, I feel like we should be proud of where we are um, getting there in all different types of ways, but like, you know, understanding like the healthy way to eat. Obviously, I mean, I think it's almost hypocritical, maybe because we both are like, fine, we'll do prolon again. But it's not a, it's a reset, right? Like, at least that's how I see it, because I'm not doing that shit longer than I have to. Yeah, Um, I do like how it just, I don't know. I just feel like there's, I, I do feel like it's a good reset, like just kind of gets, it's a detox in my yeah, but at the same time, do I find myself feeling overweight and I'm like, oh, I should just do prolon? Like, yeah, I, I definitely yeah. have that thought. It crosses my mind all the time, where it's like, oh, if I right. just do this and I'll like, you know, not be bloated or whatever, you know. And that right. should not be it. But I mean, even talk about the prescriptions that people take for weight loss, and it's like maybe they don't want to take a prescription medication, right? Nobody wants to do plastic surgery and, and cut their body open. Nobody wants to take uh, a hard prescription drug, you know, and, and have to rely on that. But it's we get to the point where it's like, well, this is better than the alternative of staying the same, you know? Right. Right. Um, I don't know. It's It's like it's a weird situation. It's, you know, when you kind of feel like you can't get to another place. Mm-hmm. Um, without making a drastic choice, I guess that's kind of where when you find yourself having to make that decision. But um, it's definitely like closing the plastic surgery loop. It's not the easy, quick solution. Um, and certainly, if you're not already like happy with yourself in some way, it's not going to make you happier. Mm-hmm. Um, the quick and easy diet pill. I mean, those have severe health effects, um, whether, you know, your body's going to gain a whole bunch of weight after you stop taking it or say it impacts your heart, mm-hmm. um, your liver, your kidneys, your, you know, whatever your major organs. Right. Um, I don't know. There's some scary stuff out there that a people will try and people will spend money on. Yeah. Um, so I think like the most important thing is definitely do your research. Yep. But yeah, do your research no matter what it is, whether it be prescription, a diet plan, plastic surgery. It's like feel good about yourself. Do it for you. A marathon. Do that too. Yeah. Pro on. Like don't just go <laughs> pro on. But running like even just like an exercise regimen, like you should make sure that it's something that you can handle and that you're not gonna injure yourself doing. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yeah. You have one body. So, you know, getting back into you know, why, why you do these things? Why do you do plastic surgery? Why do you take prescription drugs? Why do you do the crash diet? Um, why do you do, it, it comes down to body image and, and most importantly, self image of what you think about yourself, you know? And mm-hmm. there's the fine line that, um, with fillers and Botox, right? There's a lot of assumptions that people and judgments that people will do with that. Right. And I, I mean, it's, I, I catch myself doing it sometimes where I'm like, oh, wow, that's that's too much, you know? That's too much to me, but that person might like it, right? But you can always tell when somebody is insecure and 
and is suffering from that body dysmorphia. Like, no, like more and more and more. Right. It's never enough. Like lose the weight, lose the weight. It's never enough. Like um, filler, filler, filler. Oh, it's never enough. Right. So that gets right. back into like, know yourself, be happy with yourself, right? You have to, right. you have to work on that first, right? Cause nothing is going to solve your problems. Nothing. Mm -hmm. They are, these are all external yeah. things that we do, whether it be plastic surgery or a relationship. A person's not going to solve your problems. Uh, a relationship, marriage, something like that, that's not going to solve your problems. Kids aren't going to solve your problems. You know, anything. Have a baby. Yeah, right. Like it just nothing outside of you is going to solve your problem, right? And, I'll, and I will be open and honest yeah. and say, um, I mean, I get disport, you know, um, Botox, I do lip filler. I actually just started doing cheek filler. Um, and eyelashes. Yeah, I do eyelashes. <laughs> She's like, girl, don't stop there. You got the lashes. <laughs> Your hair clearly is not a natural red. Um, and then. What are you talking about? Your mom's hair is definitely that color. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got fake nails, you know. And somebody could look at me and say, oh, too much. Like, oh, you're a life coach. Why do you, why do you need all these things? Right. And I could look at somebody else and be like, whoa, that's too much, you know, and somebody could look at somebody else who had one thing, right, and say, oh, that's too much. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It really just matters what you think. If you're going to say it doesn't matter what anybody thinks in terms of assumptions and judgments coming at you, then it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about what you are trying to get or gain or impress this person with by doing something to your body, you know, like don't do it for anybody else, but you, and also don't care what anybody else thinks about it, but you. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, you have to be at a certain level of, I think, emotional maturity to make some of these decisions. Mm -hmm. Um, because we've certainly made decisions in the past that maybe weren't necessarily directly related to our body or were, um, maybe relationships, maybe, you know, whatever whatever it is that um had been rash or like everybody else is doing it I have to do it mm -hmm. um I think yeah it, it goes it just goes back to knowing yourself and and being confident in your skin and knowing that the decision you're making is because it's something that you want to do or it's um you know it, it has to be something that you're comfortable with um mm -hmm. because yeah. I'm not gonna lie like Plastic surgery had a lot of recovery, a lot of pain, a lot of garments that you don't want to wear, like plus judgment that you're already going to have to deal with. So it's no path is going to be easy or quick or like the fast solution. That's for certain. Mm -hmm. And to that end, be supportive of, um, be supportive of if they're your friend, be supportive of them. Like, yeah, ask the question, make sure that they're okay. But like, I'm not friends with you because your hair is because of your hair color or because of your eyelash length. Like I'm friends with you because like, I feel like we just have a great bond. We have so much fun. We laugh. We can relate on so many different levels and talk about different things and like have a lot of different things in common. We're only taking like 15 trips together this year. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You I'm know, so it's it. like... But I know me too. Um, I gotta wrap this podcast up so I can look at things for Greece. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know there's still a couple spots open for the Create Your Fate podcast or <laughs> Create Your Fate retreat in Greece in April 2023. So join us. It so much fun. Yeah, it will be really fun. Um, <laughs> but you know, like you're friends with somebody for a deeper reason than the superficial, and I don't think people will ever stop wanting to be prettier or have better skin or mm -hmm. chasing the fountain of youth. I mean, that's been, that's been a thing for de like centuries, right? Right. Yeah. Literally. Um, and what, I guess this could lead us into um, that whole body types, you know, throughout history. Right. Things um, change. It's not just, you know, uh, Paris Hilton, Kate Moss into Kim Kardashian into um, 
you know, Beyonce back into now what they're trying to get us back into heroin chic. Also, if a body type is called heroin chic, can we just put an end to that? <laughs> yeah, seriously. There's nothing good about that. I mean, when no. we grow, so what's funny is that the 80s were athletic. <laughs> Well, yeah, but you know, all the jazzercise. <laughs> like back, way back in the day, like the wealthy people were pasty and chubby because they didn't have to work outside in the sun and they ate well. Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you go back and look, it's a lot of the, a lot of the, standards of beauty are actually um very i'll go back to say f the patriarchy but they're actually very racist they have terrible intentions right they come from not great places these standards of beauty and it's like we just don't question them and we just live with them who makes them up anyway i don't know yeah we went from Somebody wants to make 2000s. money we went from 1990s, um, extremely thin waifish figure, to the 2000s. A waif. Toned, slim. The waif. I would. A waif? <laughs> toned, slim. Yeah, waif. Like, waif. Like, uh, waif. W A I F. Yeah, that's insane. Oh, check out yeah. that waif. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> My weft? <laughs> <laughs> God. So the 2000s were toned, slim body. And then all of a sudden, bam, 2010s, hourglass figure with full curves. Right. So what? here's the thing is when, okay, if this changes every 10 years, right? Let's say, you know, you don't really, you know, care about this until you're, let's just say like 15. I mean, that's like what, five, six generations or um, uh, decades? That you have to change your yeah. body type, like you're gonna get one of those, right? You get maybe. one season <laughs> of maybe, what your natural, maybe. yeah, right, maybe, right. You might not even pair up at the right time. It's like you are gonna get one season, and that's it. And then what? We're at the athletic build. The athletic build was in the '80s. I was between the ages of newborn and six. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what? Kind of think about it. I was but pretty athletic in the '80s. <laughs> <laughs> you can't some people just aren't going to be tall <laughs> right it's, just, not. it's crazy and it's just literally it's nutty and so you know it's so funny to think about you know when like just like the times changing right and I think this is true for a lot of people where the times change and we always want to be something that we're not. We're never focused on the actual present moment. And if we could learn just to be happy in the present moment, that is such a game changer and, and more, you know, aspects than just body image, but happy where you are, right? Because I, I, you know, came back from Soul Cycle, taught. I was teaching 15 soul cycle classes a week. I was teaching Legree full time too. I was teaching upwards of 20 to 25, 30 fitness classes a week. And yeah, I looked really good. <laughs> you know, I, I would hope so. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> my body hurt all the time. I could not even work out for myself for my own mental health, right? I was broke because I was making $0 doing all this work, right? I was tired. I, I couldn't uh, take off because I was trying to, you know, you don't get paid if you don't work, right? So I missed weddings. I missed right. funerals. I missed everything. And because I was trying to, to build this fitness career. <clears throat> but, you know, I look at pictures of myself and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so much skinnier then. But here's what the picture doesn't show. It doesn't show all these things. I can easily look at a picture. Oh my God, I'm so skinny. And that's going to be my first thought, right? That is my first unconscious thought. I'm so much skinnier. Now my second thought is going to be, well, I was uh, broke. I was unhappy. My body hurt. You know, I had no life, right? All these things that pictures don't show, right? So look at, if you're looking at a picture of yourself, you know, what is it? What does it not show, right? Right. Go, dig into that second thought. 
Okay. Yeah. And really think about it, right? And, and express some gratitude for where you are, where I can be like, wow, I'm 10 pounds heavier, but I'm really happy with how I spend my time. I'm really happy with where I'm at in my career. Uh, and, and the list goes on, you know? And, and here's the kicker I remember where I was. I, I remember it was the day we were taking Soul Cycle pictures in New York. And everybody's there looking glam, you know, they do your hair and makeup and you're, everyone's um, literally taking off clothes and putting on the clothes. Like, it's like, everyone's just like throwing on clothes. Like we, They had stock clothes that you would just put on. Right. And I remember I couldn't wear a lot of the tops because they were made for the, you know, smaller petite people with no chest. And I was like, had like three sports bras to pick from versus 80. Right. Cause I actually had boobs mm-hmm. and I remember being very self-conscious and and feeling really overweight and really like, mm. oh, God, like I don't want to be here. Like, I don't look good. And I looked back at that picture because I was actually – I was going to post my original Soul Cycle picture whenever I was coming to Austin to teach. You know, I hadn't taken pictures in a while. And I was like, oh, I'll just like post my original picture. It's kind of like what we do sometimes. And I was, I pulled it up and I'm like, oh my God, I am so much skinnier in this picture. And I was like, I I can't post this. Like it was, it it was overwhelming this, like, I don't know what the feeling was. Just like, I I think I was embarrassed maybe or like ashamed Mm -hmm. and I didn't post it. Do you think people would even notice the difference? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know that they would. I'm sure. I'm sure some people would, but the majority would probably not. You know. Yeah, I but don't think in so. my probably, head, it'd probably be like your hair's a little pinker. <laughs> yeah, and longer. Uh, like, why did I do that? Hair grows, <laughs> but <laughs> or I can get a weave. Either one, right? There's, there's. No, your hair now is a little pinker than like. Probably oh yeah, like yeah, it used to be bright red. A little more red, or like. Well, people would know, like um, that's not a recent picture of me, but. Yeah. I don't know. I just. But what's interesting? What's interesting about what you said too? Um, about you know when when you oh my god I was so thin but you didn't realize like oh my body hurt I was tired I wasn't making a lot of money I wasn't like this other level of happiness wasn't there. Like you're saying too, when you look back at a picture and you're like, oh, it was a little heavier, but man, like I had a great year, you know, mm-hmm. like yeah. I got to try all the, I toured Italy and got to try all the food, you know, whatever the yeah. situation is. Um, I think, I, yeah, I think it's, it's important to give yourself, you know, some grace and mm-hmm. it's, it's hard. It's definitely a conscious, it's a conscious challenge. It is. Um, oh, for sure. I'm a life coach and I still was like, oh, I don't want to like, you know, like I know all these things, but I still was like, oh, I don't want to post this, you know, and it is, it's a, it's a battle that, yeah, it's like, it's sometimes it's daily, you know, and yeah. depending on, I guess, how much time you spend on social media, I would definitely recommend people. I stopped scrolling and it is wonderful. It's mm-hmm. awesome. Um, I need to do that. But sometimes they're just funny memes, and they're so good. <laughs> well, the algorithm too. It's like if you, if you, even if you hold your phone over a picture for an extra second, it's like, oh, you like this. Let me show you more of it. So if you are putting yeah. your picture on somebody who's, um, uh, f- you know, fitness person or uh, body type that you like or model or whatever it is, you're going to get more of that, right? So yeah. yeah. Hold the phone over the memes for a second longer is my point. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to trick the algorithm back, right? Um, so it, it's interesting because, you know, I, I coach people, think about what you want, right? Don't stop thinking about what you don't want because you're just going to get more of what you don't want. And I had done this thing last year where all I did was focus on my body and the the ways that I love I loved it and where I was had insane gratitude for it, right? So I, I do agree. And there's mirrors everywhere. It's like Pilates, make a former, mirrors everywhere. And my eyes always go 
the one part of my body that I absolutely hate, right? Hmm. And I, I, it's like the lower part of my stomach and I just, you know, short torso, that's just where you're going to, you're going to gain quicker there, right? Because it's smaller mm-hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. But my, my, my eyes would always go to this one spot on me and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it's still here, right? And I kept thinking about what I don't want, what I don't like, what I don't have. I don't have the, the stomach that I want. And I did this challenge when I first started the 90 day mindset makeover. Um, and I was doing this with some people who were doing it. And I, I decided, Hey, I'm going to do this thing where all I do is I'm going to, you're not responsible for your first thought, right? It's going to go there. It's going to look and you're going to say, Oh, I don't like this. But I said, I'm going to recant everything and choose again. And it led to the first couple of days. I was like, you know, always going to look there, but then I was like, well, look what I'm doing. Like I'm, I'm look at my strong legs, right? Oh my gosh. I'm really happy that I can do this or look how um, well I'm performing this one exercise, you know, and it was hard at first. And then you kind of get used to it and it comes into this Mm -hmm. at the end of the 30 days, I did it for 30 days. This like insane, just gratitude of focusing on things that you like about yourself and Mm -hmm. You know what? I, I want to say like my body didn't change actually at all. Mm-hmm. And I mean, maybe it did, but I just remember being so happy with it, you know? Hmm. And I was just yeah, was so awesome. happy and I loved everything about it. Like was my stomach still there? Yeah, it was. But it, mm-hmm. I was happy with it, you know? Yeah. For – for me, I feel like I do the same thing, but sometimes like, I don't know, there's in the solid core classes, there's the blue lights. And for whatever reason, sometimes those blue lights, I'm like, is that me? Like, holy shit. Yeah. It looks good. You know? Yeah. And it's a nice feeling. Now I don't always feel that way. God, I never like, I mean, but it's a really great feeling when you do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, I, I don't know. It's, it's weird how you can really trick your mind into or convince your mind maybe into thinking or seeing, you know, when, when positive begets positive, like it, it works. Right. And it, I feel like that kind of, you know, it's mindset works at work or like if you're in a bad mood and you're like, you know what, I just really need to be positive today. I just need to go in today and think this like, mm-hmm. whoa, it can change your world. Yeah. I mean, that's I literally I learned it years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I finally had known this when I was younger, when I got that Pizza yeah, Hut right. sticker from episode one. But <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's a law of attraction. It's literally what you focus on, you get more of, right? Your mind is so strong. Mm-hmm. It will literally always find what you look for. So if you look for a reason to hate your body, you're going to find it, you know? Right. Um, if you look for a reason, to love your body, you're also going to find it, you know? Um, and it it really is just, I mean, gratitude is such just, it's just like a game changer. And a lot of times it just doesn't feel authentic at first. You're like, I'm grateful for, oh, I can't think of anything because I'm hating everything about myself so much. But Mm -hmm. really it just comes down to just learning to love yourself and accept yourself. And in order to do that, I think you Honestly, I think, you know, the most confident people out there are not the people who are the best at something or look the best at something or do things the best way or are the picture of whatever everybody else wants. It's just the people who understand themselves the most. Right. And you know what is interesting, too, that I found myself doing this today. There was this girl standing on the street corner and she was, I think, walking to the metro stop. And um, the metro here is like our public transportation. So um, she's there. She has fuzzy cat ears. She's an adult, has fuzzy cat ears on, has these massive earrings that are like crazy shaped, um, some jacket. But she was like, confident and feeling herself. And my first thought was like, what is this girl doing? What a weirdo. But then I stopped and I was like, you know what? Good for her. Like she's feeling like she knows herself and she's feeling herself. 
she's feeling herself and she's confident in who she is. And like that, I don't know, that's just, I guess, a gift or maybe even something that we should all work towards. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not easy. It's definitely not easy. It's not quick, but it's worth, uh, worth aspiring to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, I think that's, that's kind of it. It's like, you gotta feel yourself, you know? And, Mm -hmm. but in order to do that, it's like, you got to spend time with you. So if that means, you know, figuring out what, you know, screwing the, the food chart or the food pyramid and BM, BMI, it's like, what works for you? What, what workouts right. make you feel really good? Right. What do you enjoy doing? Right. What foods make you feel really good? Right. Um, right. what activities, how you spend your time? Because here's the mm-hmm. thing is, um, when you do all those things that make you feel good, you, you can wake up looking the same way you did yesterday when you were in a shitty mood, thinking about everything that you don't, don't like. And you, maybe you ate foods that don't make you feel good, even if they were good foods, but you're like, Oh, I don't want to eat this because I'm just eating this because I want to look a certain way or whatever. Right. And you know, you're not going to feel good about yourself, but if you do things that make you feel good, right. You're going to feel good. It's literally, that's it. It's learning, it's learning your body and finding that balance and relationship with your body for sure. Like you just, when you're saying eat foods that make you feel good, like when you really step back and for you take away gluten for me, Mm -hmm. um, I always found that I had trouble digesting like high fat dairy products, but I love cheese. But you know what? I took cheese out of my diet, took dairy out of my diet, and then I had a piece of, don't judge me, American cheese, like melted on like I was like, why do I judge you? Oh, <laughs> that's the cheese you went for? <laughs> I, was like, I would never you judge you. I'm judging you. You went for American cheese? <laughs> Good old solid grilled cheese, but I just was like, oh, yeah. On eggs, and, you know? I felt like garbage. Yeah. You got to know yourself. Two hours later. Know your body. I mean, here's the thing too. There's, there's so many things out there because everybody's different. So if gluten free is not, it's not your jam, then don't do it. Right. And, and you don't need a a label on anything. It doesn't have to be like, Oh, I'm gluten free. I'm keto. I'm this, whatever. It's sometimes I eat this, but like 80% of the time I eat this and 20% I have, I have fun, you know, on the weekends or whatever, you know, whatever that balance is. And some, I would never tell you to not drink champagne. I love champagne. Um, yeah. I really do. I really do. I just like can't like I just liquor does not. I just don't. It doesn't do well. I don't like it. But it just doesn't end well. An espresso martini though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Margarita. Oh yeah. Well, and oh, margaritas man. too. I'm in Texas. You have to drink them. But generally speaking. Hey. It's not a good thing. My body is not happy when I drink it. I'll say that. But it's funny. I'm at the I'm at a place where like the wine isn't sitting. Yeah. Champagne. Yeah. Champagne's fine. Wi- yeah. Like I love red wine. But mm-hmm. Well, also your body changes every time. So like allow your body to change, you know? And again, that's just checking in with yourself, being like, how does this food make me feel? How does this workout make me feel? How does this, um, you know, me thinking about plastic surgery make me feel, right? Why am I doing this for me? You got to feel yourself. You got to live your life, you live your life for yourself, right? Am I doing, am I, am I going to make this invasive bodily procedure for me, right? Or do I want to get filler in my nose because it makes it straight and makes me feel good? Or do I think this person's going to like me if I had a straight nose, you know? Like there's, right. there's all these things like just do it for you and, and really right. spend time with yourself and get to know yourself. But more importantly, learn to love yourself every step of the way, right? Whether right. you're on your weight loss journey, if you are 10 pounds heavier than you think you could, I hate to use the word should, don't even use that word. There's no should. It doesn't actually exist, but 10 pounds heavier than you were. It's like, you can make a, a decision to make conscious you know, healthy decisions and whatnot, or decisions that make you feel confident, but just love yourself. Even if you didn't do that, like, would I love myself even if I did not do this? And if that answer is no, work on that first. Yes. A hundred percent. 
So. Couldn't say it better myself. <laughs> Maybe we should end it there. I, oh my gosh, is our I, yeah. is our series actually over? <laughs> I'm sure we can think of more for another time, but yeah, another for time. now. Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks for being on the phone well, with me for three hours. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been fun. We'll have to collect a QA and a and see what people want to know. Yeah, 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 for sure. I'll put a little poll on Instagram for sure. Um, yeah, well, that's it. So I'm, I'm going to tag you, Alana, your fake, your fake, <laughs> um, alter ego for your to protect your um identity from the public fame that's going to come from being this podcast guest you know but uh i don't know if people love you then where do they where can they find you i'll tag you on the on the video oh yeah um i mean instagram at ak dibus that's me and i hear you might be starting but i guess blog blondes not bland <laughs> blonde, not bland. Uh, nothing has happened yet, but maybe we'll maybe. see. We'll see what happens with maybe that. Maybe I should start that. I should grab that Instagram handle too. That's not. Yeah, you probably should. Yet. Quick, do it before the episode <laughs> comes out. <laughs> People are asking yeah, really. all the time. <laughs> I get hit up like, <laughs> "Would you like to buy Meg Ellis Life Coach Houston dot com?" And I'm like, "Who buys these things and tries to sell you them?" I'm like, it's crazy. Are you literally doing it right now? You're doing it right now. You're funny. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh crap, I gotta do it right now. Oh my oh god. My god. <laughs> um yeah, I'll definitely I'll share Elena with y'all. Excuse me, Alana. Um but she's my Meanwhile, best my Instagram has like phonetical phonetic pronunciation. <laughs> yes. My name I got lucky, Meg. It's pretty easy. <laughs> Meg. <laughs> but well, that's a wrap on body crazy. image. And um, thanks for hanging with us. If you missed the first two episodes, definitely check them out. There's some good stuff in there, good nuggets. Um, you know, I believe that you can create your life, you can create your fates. And we're gonna nail this on the third try. We're gonna both do it. <laughs> Great. If we could leave you with just one thing, it would be this. Expect expect good, good things. things. Always. Always. <laughs> and they will happen. That's all we got for you guys today. And we'll see y'all soon. It's time for you to create your fate.